Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man Stevens, Hello. and the man whose only life goal is to win a Phyllis Diller lookalike contest, Ryan Preston. I, I figure I'm going to nail this in about 35 years. <laughs> well, she didn't start acting until nearly 40, so you're probably right there now. <clears throat> so did so. James had something he wanted to start the show off with. Okay, so... Just throughout the <gasps> day, like I'll find that I quote <laughs> random movies, films, or any you know, books, whatever. And you know, I was really thinking like the most famous one. I've said it a lot on RFR as far as movie quotes that we enjoy <laughs> or lines that we repeat to people or say or take over. And I know I've used it a lot on this show, this and RFR. You gotta have an opinion. Now, I, I hopefully everybody can kind of figure out where that came from. So, I, I think Fari's favorite quote that's, that you're going that we no, use. No, no, one that you actually use in your day to day life, or every other day, or very often. That is a movie quote. A mo- well, I've got a quote, but it's not a movie quote. It's the one I steal from you, and I purposely butcher it just to piss you off. It's the never underestimate the power of stupid people. Yeah. Um, I do that on purpose, and though. Human it, stupidity. Yeah, because it bugs the crap out of them, and it's the one thing I know that slightly bugs them. So, but, uh, but you can, know. Can I give you, like, my one of my favorite quotes of all time, okay. though, just because I think it's hilarious? It's a David Lee Roth quote. He said, I'm a combat hippie, peace, love, and heavy weapons. <laughs> Um, besides that, one I use, yeah, I probably use it maybe once or twice a month, and I don't know how it comes up, but it does. It's the, allegedly it's a Winston Churchill quote, and no, I've never completely chased it down, so mileage may vary. It's, uh, I like pigs. Cats look down at you. Dogs look up at you. Pigs consider you equal. And it no. just makes me laugh every time. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, the other one that I use very often, and I swear if somebody gives me the right response to this. We will be fast friends forever. I know once I say it, Ryan will know exactly like where it's from. And John might know, but good morning. And isn't it a lovely morning? <laughs> I know it, but I can't now, place Now, if it. somebody can give me the proper response, we can't actually do it on the show, or John will have to re-record this episode. But if they do give me the correct response, I am going to be fast friends with that person right off the bat. It's from Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Okay. Because I know it's like I know that, but the back of my mind, it's. <laughs> and the the response is absolutely inappropriate for anybody, <laughs> except Mel Brooks. But you know. Yeah. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> but if somebody yeah, like I would, I would have to be response. fighting my urge to finish quotes. Uh, it, I have that urge in general. Anytime I hear a quote, it could be a stranger on the so, street just says something from a movie, and I'd want to go up and fucking do lines. So, but I'd have to, I'd have to absolutely fight the urge on that one. Yeah. So I'm going to ask everybody, please just sit down, put your tray, bowl, t- tray tables down, and I'm going to go on a, just a tad bit of a rant. If you're wondering why you haven't heard from the magnificent trio in three fucking weeks is... We're all from Northern California, or Southern California being for Ryan. We're all California people, and California has this amazingly wonderful, sense of sarcasm, utility called PG&E. And in their amazing love for the California people, they just randomly turned off the power. And I know you're thinking, no, they warned you-ish. Sometimes it was a day, a couple of days, an hour fucking before. Um, and I, not only could I not do one of the things I love weekly, which is my podcast with, I was going to say lovely people, but sometimes it gets a little gamey. Um, I couldn't do the show. I lost money and food and a bunch of other things. So pg e you can seriously, honestly, humbly, and totally eat a bag of dicks. But if, if you're out there and you happen to really enjoy dicks, um, my humble apologies. I don't want to insult you, just the bastards who run fucking PG&E. Um, because I know people who, like an acquaintance of ours, their fucking well pump blew up because of PG&E. I was watching TV and they turned it off and I didn't know they were going to do it. Because basically they give you an under or over. Oh, it could be off in the next 48 hours. They don't give you the time. You yeah. could be watching TV and the next thing you know, your TV's fucked up because the electronics are not meant to have no power applied that fast, <clears throat> especially when you're watching something. 
Um, also, pg e fuck you. Fuck you and fuck you. You how hard it is. My little boy has some shows he really likes. I know what you're saying. You shouldn't let children watch TV. Hey, raise your own fucking kids. My kid likes a couple of shows, so I let my kids watch a... Who are these? Savages that say don't let your kids watch TV. Oh, oh, I, I've, I've met a couple of them. Um, no, some of don't let your kids participate in the 21st century. No, I can agree to cell phones because yeah, I can agree to electronic devices like cell phones, depending on the child. But yada yada yada. But my son likes certain cartoons, and I let my son on a, a nightly basis watch a little bit of cartoons. You made my son cry, and um, I'm one of those people that uh, I have a tad bit of an issue if my son cries because it wasn't something I fucking did, you bunch of bag of dicks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if you can't tell. I'm still really irritated about pg and And then and they said, the dicks. and they said, oh, by the way, my, my humble apologies if you happen to enjoy said schwanzes. Didn't mean to upset you. Um, pg and comment was, oh, if you lost food. <clears throat> If you lost food, this is my Trump impression. If you lost food, go to a fucking food closet if you cannot afford to buy more food. So what pg and basically said was go steal food from people who cannot afford it at all. I had a full fucking fridge until those <clears throat> people decided to turn off the power and ice and all that really doesn't last that long. Once your food starts defrosting, you're not really supposed to put it back in the fucking freezer. Um, so, and the, the other thing, what was it? There's a couple of different things they did. Well, at the moment, that's enough. So if, if you're wondering anybody out there about why this happened in California, it was a cacophony of bullshit. Um, so a little bit of politics, so trigger warning. Um, California is very environmentally has a lot of environmentalists. One of the issues with that is environmentalism and technology don't necessarily mix. So PG&E didn't really trim around their power poles. One of the reasons why some of the places have burned down. Most of it was because of PG not maintaining their power, their power lines, etc. But so just do me a favor. If, if any of you listen to this and even if you don't have PG&E, can you just do hashtag fuck pg and it would make me so happy. Thank you. Okay, y'all can go. My, I feel so much better now. Uh, are you sure? I'm trying to get better at my ranting and be funny. I thought this was a pretty good rant. No, it was acceptable. Yeah, well, you know, but what's the problem when 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 big ass companies do shit like that? They're always gonna gonna couch it in the way to the general public, like we're doing this to help you. But 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 folks, this is this is necessary, and we know it's a terrible inconvenience, but. But 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 damn it, we're gonna do it for for your safety and the safety of others. But yeah, but but you all people in the area, people who are dealing with this kind of on the ground level, and not just seeing the shit on the news like me. You know what I mean? I'm I'm down here in L.A. I I see the stuff on the news and I see the the good intentions behind everything, right? Um, and then I talk to people who are dealing with this shit in the area, and they're like, like this is their fault to begin with. You know, it, it's because of these problems weren't addressed before that, that now it's this terrible thing and they're going to, you know, put it in the, oh, this is, you know, force majeure kind of thing and we're just doing this to, for safety, et cetera. And the people around are like, wait, what the fuck, man? Like, at least own this shit and just <sighs> say you fucked up. And it, the part that really, and I'll be honest, I was, I, I got pretty heated during it because there's nothing like working at, you know, working really hard during the day and you come home and all of a sudden I'm living in 1860 fucking five. Um, yeah. Fucking Laura Ingalls over, over there. Um, the, the, the issue I had was the fact that pg and basic comment was, Oh, if you lost food and you spent your food budget, go to the food closet. They have plenty of food. That to me was the most insulting thing I've ever heard of. Cause there's people who legitimately do not have money who use that to feed themselves and their kids. I set, we set aside, my wife and I set money aside every month to buy fucking food. It's called budgeting. But because PG&E and all their wonderful gloriousness decided not to take care of anything for a fucking decade. Yeah. So, I'm going to totally change the subject for a little while. Bastard. Now, <clears throat> some of you... 
remember that I was kind of educating people on history for a little while at work, some of the young generation and things like that. So it got me thinking that there is somebody that just kind of disappeared out of the, out of basically the history books. Now, um, oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of interesting. No, I'll, go, I'll get back to that. Um, <clears throat> so Ryan may remember me talking to him about this guy that wasn't really taught in the Revolutionary War. And I think it was when we were watching The Patriot or something like that. Because that's who the Benjamin Martin, and that's what I was trying to find it again, is it was basically who Benjamin Martin was, you know, supposed to be. Well, he was based off a couple of different people. Well, if I said the Swamp Fox, do you know who that is? The name I know. I just can't place it. Ryan, do you remember me talking to you about the Swamp Fox? The Swamp Fox? No. I know the Desert Fox. So I, I remember I talked to you about it and you were wondering about the guy. So I, you know, I couldn't remember his actual name, but his actual name is Francis Marion. And he is one of the fathers of guerrilla warfare. Guy was known for hitting the British forces and then pulling back and running away. And they would continue to do this. And they were one of the biggest groups of people that they, that the British were after. And it was that whole thing of standing in the line and shooting at each other. He wasn't down for that. I would never want to be standing up with, you know, a couple hundred muskets pointed at me, and it's just pretty much just a crap shoot at each other. Wait, wait, are, are we talking? Yeah, no, I'm good there. Where the question is at New York City Police, because I'm pretty comfortable with a bunch of New York City Police doing it. No, these were guys with brown besses that could pick a squirrel off at 100 yards. Oh, never, never mind. I don't want to go against English regulars. Yeah, no. I, I'm not going to stand in the line and let people shoot at me. But, you know, I was looking at him up, and, you know, he is one of those guys that you don't really hear about. Now, how many guys, you know, I read books about him when I was younger, and that's the reason why I knew about him. But, yeah, I was really thinking about it. Is It's another one that, you know, even people growing up that were my same age didn't know about the Swamp Fox of the Revolutionary War. Um, that's not, I mean, that's not, I'm not surprised because history, especially the farther you get away from it, history has a tendency to not, um, uh, compress it a little bit. I mean, if you, especially if, if you talk about that time period, or if you talk about like, um, the American Revolutionary War and you forget like these type of people, you know, who they really were, like these, uh, two of them. I forgot which one, but two of the, 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 the founding fathers really did not like each other. Um, so there was a bunch of stuff that you don't really find out till later on. Cause if you watch what happens, what becomes of it later on in, in years, it just becomes all of them liked each other. It was rah, 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 you know? Yeah. So I, I'm not surprised, you know, I'm, yeah, it's even starting now. Like if you talk about <clears throat> how many people know who Rommel is, how many people know. I even just mentioned the desert fox. Yeah, yeah, he did. He mentioned the devil's a fox, which is probably why John had Rommel in his brain. Well, no, probably. actually. I um, didn't hear uh but, say um, I'll tell you what, this is this is one of those guys that I'm actually kind of disappointed I don't know more about. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with the, uh, the, the start of guerrilla warfare during the Revolutionary War, but it just being the general sort of militia, well, certain militias, not obviously not all of them by any stretch, um, certain militias basically getting together their you know, more or less protect their homestead kind of yeah. kind of mentality. But yeah, not want to stand in the line, supplied all their own shit, their horses. Yep. They used their deer hunting rifles, which were notoriously better than, than the fucking, you know, regular army shit. Yeah. Um, well, the, the other thing. More fucking, they kept, you know, good care of them and things like that. But they started shooting from the trees. Well, I mean, you know, like really fucking freaking people out. Like, yep. oh, we're not going to die just at this line. It's ever else. Well, that's where the term. Yeah. That's where the term. You know, Kentucky windage came from. When these people who they they understood firearms a lot better than than most likely the the regulars. So these people who shot for a living understood. Okay, it's windy. I got to go up and to the left. And yeah. <clears throat> Honestly, it was right. probably it was probably all stuff that people who shot bows and arrows understood, you know, a hundred plus years ago uh, beforehand, because yeah. it's it's stuff that you have to know. Yeah, 
Well, um, the other thing yeah. about this guy is that he's credited in the lineage of the Rangers, Special Forces, and the Green Berets. So each one of these branches of the military has something that they claim this guy was the one who really started this type of military warfare. He was also credited in the French, uh, the French, uh, uh, totally screwed it up. The French and American War, where is it? French and Indian War, is what they what I meant. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just was really thinking about it. Is the fact that you know this is a guy who decided that this whole honorable fighting style that the British and quite a few of the, of the colonialists were into. It's like, no, this is warfare. We're here to kill you, to get you out of here. So they would do what needed to be done. They would well, because their... didn't they do that? Now uh, forgive me for not knowing a whole lot of, about Military. medieval history, history, but wasn't that just a fallback from old style combat? You know, yeah. like you're talking about middle ages, it just happened to be middle ages combat with firearms. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. But yeah. So that's why. Hey, so, uh, here, here's some, uh, here's some interesting shit. Walt Disney productions produced the swamp Fox, an eight episode miniseries about Marion, uh, airing in 1959 and 1961. It starred Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, that's what I was kind of when I was going through and finding stuff. I started laughing because I read that, and I'm like, oh, "You're kidding that's me!" That's hilarious. Man. I have. So, do you think that this is going to be available on Disney Plus? I'm actually want to try Disney Plus. I'm hoping I they have know, a free trial. Right? That'd be fantastic. Because that's yeah, actually they put out all this kind of old shit that'd be the fucking best. Because that's the only reason why I'm even remotely interested, just for I could see their back catalog. Because if they don't have it, right. then I. Fuck it, dude. I don't really need to see all 20 Avengers movies again. Yeah, no joke. You're right. Or if it's just all House of Mouth cartoons, it's like, all right, cool. See, because I want, I want Davy Crockett. I mean, I already know one movie they'll right. never do. I yeah. want the Davy Crockett's. I want all the, the the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse shows. And I want everything. Yeah. I want the Wonderful World of Disney's back, like the 60s one. Yeah. Yeah, I want all the old Chippendale stuff. Uh, all the old, uh, uh, especially the, uh, the the goofy stuff. See the with, chip and uh, the the old Disney cartoons like that. <laughs> I'm I would not be surprised if some of those get pulled, um, just because they in, had a racist conversations. In, in in today's society, I don't think they would play really well. You can catch a lot of them on YouTube. Um, most of them are fine, but there's, there are things that there that pop up and you're like, holy shit, I don't believe they got away with that. So I don't see a lot of the old, uh, Chippendales. There's some Donald Duck ones. I don't think Mickey Mouse from what I've seen so far and what I remember is fairly, is fairly green. So I, Wait a minute. So you think that they're not going to show the Nazi Donald Duck episode? Yeah. Man. Or like... <laughs> There's, I don't know, there's just, for some reason, they fucking pick on Asians a lot in Disney, old Disney cartoons. Yeah, they kind of do. Um, and I'm not even talking about the ones di that were during, like, who, had, who were talking about World War uh, World War II. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of curious in what they do, because a lot of Disney stuff was okay for the time, but it's not okay now. And there's a real big to-do about how we must judge um, stuff from the past with modern day standards, which I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, to me, it's all about context. You know what I mean? You and I, we have the context for, for what those were at the time. You know, we we were old enough to remember when those things were acceptable and why they're not necessarily now. Um, so, I mean, you know, for people like you and me, it's just like, that's what I'd be looking forward to. And, you know, for, for our kids, let's say, we can add that context to the conversation. Hey, listen, back in the day, this was fine, but this is why it's such and such and whatever, whatever. Um, so do you know what, but, you know, I think their opinion might be just, uh, we don't want kids stumbling across this thinking this is just, you know, your average new Disney or what have you. Well, there's, there's a, there's a couple of things that, that bug me. One, kids don't care. And I'm not even sure, depending on the age, when it would be appropriate to have that conversation. Cause I don't know if I want to be that parent who my kid say watches 
uh, a, a movie or a cartoon from the 50s who every scene going, no, this is really what this is about. This took place in the antebellum himself. And this was, you know, so I, I'm really not sure when that conversation is appropriate. And well, the, the well, biggest, the thing is, wait, hold, not, on, hold on, hold on. Let me, everything let me, would even need that. And the, the other thing was the fact, the reason I don't think they'll do it <laughs> is we have the cancel culture today. If this was like 10 years ago, then I would know, okay, what they would do is they'd put some sort of warning in front of it. I would be totally cool because that warning could spark a conversation. But instead, what it is is like, oh, this has possible possibilities of being racist or somebody felt uncomfortable about it because of some reason that they, then they'll say, don't show it. And that bothers me as a person who, who, who loves everything and is willing to have conversations. Yeah, but there's, there's still things that Disney releases today that, that would fall under that category. Um, uh, one of the things that I, uh, uh, got from Disney, uh, on, on, it's, it's available on every streaming thing, uh, which I imagine they would probably pull it back to their catalog with Family Robinson. Um, my girlfriend had never seen it before, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is classic fifties." What about you know, Swiss Family 50s, Robinson? You know? Which what part? What what? Um, well, one, how they treat women in general, um, but also uh, the killing of all the pirates, the, uh, the the racist nature of the pirates, not the. You know, just the uh, what do you call it depiction? Yeah, no. I see. I'm trying but, you know, to the fact they got the kid literally offing pirates in in a Disney movie, pushing yeah. him over over cliffs and whatnot. Is, as much as I hate to say it, I think you're right. And that's like I grew up watching that. We used to have an old VHS tape, and I I watched God, that so much tracking movies. couldn't fix it. Um, no kidding. Uh, uh, that's the thing that's still in their catalog, but it doesn't. To me, it doesn't. There's only certain things that they would even have to have a disclaimer for. The rest of it, you know, so Cinderella doesn't probably hold up as as what today's society standards, you know, would feel as as properly empowering women or whatnot. They don't give a fuck. You know, so the empowering women thing, especially in Swiss Family Robinson, I don't really see that as much. Is, is a problem with Swiss Family Robinson because if you watch it, a lot of it is more of the old-timey chivalry, chivalry. I mean, there is the issue when that one lady was introduced, but that was more of a dynamic between the brothers. Um, so I don't really see that one but being a particular big deal. Uh, the, the killing, the kids killing, I think that could possibly be an issue. They don't show anything, but it's obvious when the kid's throwing coconut grenades or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't disagree. I mean, the only thing I'm I'm kind of wondering is how they're going to do it because I want them to do it. I'm okay with having some sort of blanket statement. Um, I just I just don't know about the conversation. I mean, how do you go around having that conversation? Because I, I let my kid watch. But the I'm old- saying like the conversation that you would have to have with your kid, you wouldn't even have to bring up for ninety five percent of that shit. You know, it would only be in, in certain sort of like, like, you know, while you're sitting there watching it, be like, like, a, I honestly can't even think of an example where you'd really have to be like, hey, now listen, that, this, that's probably not a good thing to, to quote at school, you know, or, or well, what there's, have you. I can't think of with, anything. With Disney, it's not particularly what they say, but it's the animation they choose. Now, this is the one I've, I've told people about, like. Um, there's a scene, there's I a, think of more examples from Warner Brothers. Where, where there's a, there's a, there's a True. cart, there's a cartoon of uh, Chippendale, Chippendale, Donald Duck and Donald Duck is cooking breakfast and something happens, hits one of the chipmunks and all of a sudden he goes the stereotypical Asian, you know, has the, the, the pointy hat and the eyes and the whole bit. And that would be the only part that there's stuff like that sprinkled throughout Disney stuff where it is obviously racist. But as a kid, I never saw it. I didn't care. I literally could give two fucks. Yeah. Now the question is, you know, do other kids do 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 Asian children notice that? Now I I would bet they don't unless it's something they're looking for because kids don't notice shit like right. that. There's so much right, shit. Right, right. There's so much shit in the movies I loved as a kid that I never fucking noticed until I was an adult and I until I was a movie reviewer and I was picking the goddamn thing apart. Yeah, true. Uh, so that that's kind of my 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 other question is is. Is it leave it alone? What do you do? So I think I'm, I'm kind of curious because I think what's going to happen is Disney's going to hold back some of their back catalog. Um, they're definitely releasing all the big stuff, but I, I'm kind of think what they're going to do is going to see how it goes. They're going to release the non-offensive stuff, yeah. and then maybe eventually. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to release all of the all of our favorite stuff that we really want, <laughs> um, but I think they're also in a unique position where they don't have to give a shit, and I think they realize that. 
I think, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a good question. Disney still has this giant family image to uphold, and it's it's squeaky fucking clean, uh, even out of all the fishy stuff they've done. Um, I don't know. I mean, I kind of wonder what they're going to do. See, for, for some, so if anybody's out there wondering why we're actually kvetching about this is, A, hey, thanks for listening. Um, we're all kind of animation nuts. We're all movie nuts. And we've always kind of had the opinion of release it. Let people make their own judgments. Um, well, we're also all nostalgia nuts, you know, so. True. <laughs> we so, want the things of our past to be available, you know. Remember? For, I remember. For, for posterity. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, so that's. <laughs> yeah, so, we've all eaten, eaten too much member berries. So that that's part of it. I mean, especially for me. I mean, I, I want everything released so you can either generate a conversation or can people can say, okay, this movie that was made in 1950, that's a rare Cecil D. DeMille movie, is fucking amazing compared to insert new hip director here. I like that conversation. I love that conversation. Now, I think what's happening with today's society, because everybody's a tad bit too touchy, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but it ruins shit. Instead of generating... Yeah, I think all they you know, really have to do is give the option, you know, like put it on there, put it under its own heading of like... Uh, controversial? You know, uh, well, Disney classics even. Uh, or even if they don't want to title it classics, implying that uh, these are the ones we're most proud of, like, uh, you know... Uh, Disney 19 something to 19 something something. No, I'd be you know, down like, to and that. Then you, you have it in like a, like a, like one of the parental controls is like, Hey, you can block off anything, you know, OG Disney that, that you might not necessarily, you know, agree with or have, you know, but just mm-hmm. give the option to the, to the parents, but have it on there is, is like, like, Hey man, I will buy your damn streaming service. <laughs> if I can watch the, uh, you know, the goofy teaches people about exercise. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell yeah! So I'm 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 super curious on what they do, and I I wish they had a month free trial. Last time I read, and it hasn't been recently, I heard they were going to have a two week free trial. Which, depending on how bad it sucks, may be too much time, and depending on how much it's good, maybe too little time. Too little time. So, it's, so you think that they're going to have the one about sacred geometry? Oh yeah, that's pretty clean. Amazingly, I know a lot of Christian families who hate it, but that that's pretty that's pretty green. I don't see there's any issues with it. Eh, it's just part of the yeah. I really track. want that Donald Duck uh, teaches uh, uh, billiards. Well, uh, yeah, I mean the witchcraft. I don't know. I, I, it's it's pretty evergreen. I mean, I think Dude, you, no, they're gonna continue going with that. I mean, they still have Fantasia at Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, but at this point, that's the shit you put your you you have your kids watch to fall asleep because it works it with me as an adult. That and the A plus certification manual. Um, yeah, but I mean, here's the thing: they just re released Peter Pan. I mean, Peter Pan has had all kinds of controversy surrounding it, specifically because of the Red Man song. They haven't done shit to change that, and literally just re released it for like one of the anniversaries within the last couple of years. <laughs> I actually think Disney doesn't care all that much about Native Americans versus if you had a, an African American. If there was something similar, like, why is the black dude black? I think Disney would be backpedaling. But Disney black never made anything like that. Why well, no? But why is the red man red? Is the song in the uh, Peter Pan, and it's a whole bit about why is he? You know, I know. But so I'm saying, if it was if it was about why the African American is black, they would they they'd be backpedaling. Like, oh, well, we're, also, we're sorry, which I don't think Disney, you know, I don't. Unless it was factually correct <clears throat> if they made a song about how they have more melanin. Because <laughs> I, I actually think. That could think, be kind of interesting. I actually think when it's yeah. when it's called at least American history, I think India, American Indians get the shaft a lot. Wow. Yeah, you just make a song titled, They Stayed in a Place That Had More Sun Than, than Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite think <laughs> that's going to be. a title, but, you know. I don't think that's going to be. Wordy title. Try singing that. I mean, if that's going to be the fucking hook. <laughs> Try rhyming all that. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, you don't make. You haven't made that song yet, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> now, so, if they did it in like a like an old timey jazz thing, maybe that would be racist. Like, all right, all right man, don't don't <laughs> people just start crying cult of appropriation. <clears throat> so, do you guys have any favorite quotes at all? I've got a list of my favorite quotes. I've actually kept them. Uh, oh, just. Just favorite quotes, just quotes in yeah. General. Like <clears throat> anytime I find a quote that just like, just like hits a nerve or I really dig, I've always written it down. Oh, I've got one that you know I've always had <clears throat> memorized. It is better to keep your 
It is better to not speak and let them think you a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah. So I actually like that one. Most of mine is just from a hodgepodge of things. Like there's one from Star Trek Next Generation movie that I actually really dig. Um, It's don't try to be a great man. Just be a man and let history make its own judgment. I love that quote. I always thought it was a great quote because you, you know, I've always, I've known a few people like, you know, who, who try for greatness instead of, Hey, just enjoy the fucking ride. Um, actually one of my favorite quotes was came up with me just cause it always makes me chuckle. I am assuming by the standard societal conventions of interspecies gendered relationships that a person of my chromosome should not to answer this question. Therefore I shall instead say the standard reply of congratulations on losing weight. Um, yeah, the, I, I got the, the one that, that I have that, that come to mind. I, I got um, one that uh, <clears throat> that I know John loves. Okay, that guy's in a tighter spot than Christy Alley's jeans. <laughs> so the question: You guys get five points and a gold star if you can guess where that's from. <sighs> um. Oh, one of my all-time favorite quotes from one of my all-time favorite books. In the vast book, let's see. In the vast book open over our heads, which they call heaven and where God, God writes in Azure with letters of diamonds, the count of Monte Cristo. I'm a huge mark for that guy's writing. Uh, Alexandre Dumont yeah, no shit. is an amazing writer. And one of the reasons I actually think he, he is an amazing writer. Cause I haven't read a lot of books from that time period, but it's so different from now that it just comes across amazing compared to the <laughs> what, what's written now. Cause all the books that, that I've actually read are like, here's Brown bear. See Brown bear jump. It's like, what happened to the English fucking language? <laughs> yeah. You're not reading the right book, man. Um, <laughs> oh, one more. I think my two favorite quotes of all time. Uh, one is, uh, if you're not allowed to say fuck, then you're not allowed to say fuck the government. <laughs> Lenny True. Bruce. True. Uh, and um, I don't want to be a member of a, uh, I don't want to <clears throat> be a part of any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> Roger Mark. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, God, the rest of the stuff is just giant quotes from stuff. Uh, one is Doc Holliday's I'm your Huckleberry. Cause every time I see that, every time I hear, I see that scene, it just makes me giggle. Um, I'm trying to remember how this one goes, but it's one of my favorite comedians and one of the world's greatest pianists ever. It's called Victor Borga is his name. And uh, one of the quotes that he's most famous for is the shortest (laughs) distance between two people is laughter. (laughs) And the other one, I was trying to look it up. I'm not going to get it kind of complete. Oh, um, I think I just found it. On wiki. Anyways, I'll just go with the, what I remember. Um, the greatest reward is a hand to wipe away the tear. The rest goes to the government. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that guy. You guys don't know who Victor Borg is. I'm pretty sure Ryan might remember him because he had a bunch of his DVDs a while back. Um, but he is one of the greatest pianists I've ever seen. He does like this crazy rendition of Happy Birthday. Um, but he was also a comedian. He would stop and tell jokes and play the piano just as an entertainer and one of the greatest ever. So if you want to talk about insults, um, one of my favorites, just because the the idea of it makes me laugh. If you gave him an enema, he could be buried in a matchbox. Um, he has Van Gogh's ear for music. Um, let's see. He has no enemies, but is intensely disliked by his friends. Um, I, I have... like escalators because they can never be broken. They can only temporarily become stairs. <laughs> I have never killed a man, but I have read many obituaries with great pleasure. <laughs> oh, man, I know that. Who fucking said that? Clarence Darrow. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he... <laughs> Oh crap! I forgot about this one. He had he had delusions of adequacy. <laughs> Story of my life. Um, let's see. Oh, my way to the middle. <laughs> hey, the middle's a good place. Oh, so this okay, people out there, you can take this as you want. 
This is another great uh, Victor Borga quote. And uh, by the way, he's Jewish, so am I. So shut the hell up and enjoy the quote. Mazel My tov. grandfather was gave me this watch a few minutes before he died for twenty bucks plus tax. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. I was some, trying to find it, but some to... some cause happiness wherever they go. Others, whenever they go. Yeah, um, I'd like to thank my parents for making this evening possible, and my children for making it necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I find that a duck's opinion of me varies on whether or not I have bread. <laughs> that is, I've fed a lot of ducks. That's true. Oh, that's funny. If you, if you can't tell, because I can't help but to say those with doing the impression is Mitch Hedberg. And maybe my favorite Mitch Hedberg joke, I went into a grocery store and a guy asked me if I wanted a frozen banana. And I said, no, but I want a regular banana later. So, yes. <laughs> that was a roundabout way to get there. Rice is good if you're really hungry and want 2,000 of something. Oh, here we go. If anybody out there doesn't know who Mitch Hedberg is, fucking do yourself a service <clears throat> and look him up. Here's one of my favorite C.S. Lewis quotes. Nor am I generally moved by jocular, jocular inquiries such as, where will you put all the mosquitoes? A question to be answered on its own level by pointing out that, that if worse comes to worse, a heaven for mosquitoes and a hell for men could be very conveniently be combined. <laughs> um... I, I love quotes that, that, that they've always been something that, that made me laugh. The only problem with modern day quotes is it's really hard to track down where the fuck they actually came from. Oh goodness. I know joke. Like, um, the one that I quoted of the, <clears throat> of the whole thing is better to keep quiet. And let people think you're the fool. I've heard that. Uh, quoted as uh, uh, Samuel Clemens. If you idiots don't know who Samuel Clemens, go look up Mark Twain and slap yourself. And I've also heard it as, as Roosevelt. I've heard it as uh, uh, Lincoln. I've heard just that it came from all these people. And the one I like to quote it too is Samuel Clemens. That was the first one I heard somebody quote that one too. Yeah. Some of my favorite quotes over the years, I've actually done a Google search, like on the ones I've written down years later and actually found, Oh no, it was, um, <clears throat> done by somebody else. Um, like the one that said is, uh, said I didn't attend the funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it was written by a completely different person. When I, when I originally found it, let me repeat that again. Cause it's always hilarious. I didn't attend the funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it. <laughs> Um, he is not only dull himself, he is the cause of dullness in others. Wait, what? Um, he is not only <laughs> dull himself, he is the cause of dullness oh. in others. Oh, one more. A member of parliament once said to Benjamin Drissel, sir, you either die on the gallows or of some unspeakable, unspeakable disease. The statesman replied, that depends, sir, whether I embrace your policies or your mistress. <laughs> British, I I love British politics. I no love I'm I'm a huge favorite. Uh, I love British politics because the shit they say to each other is so much better than you get from the Tangerine Tornado. Yeah. Um. So I. Oh oh oh, Miss Blaine, you dance like a herd of cattle. You are a rare, a rare woman who lights up a room simply by leaving it. So one of my other favorite quote guys, because he's, he's freaking insane, is Chesty Puller. Oh, yeah. Uh, my favorite one is the one where they're surrounded. Great. Now we can shoot at those bastards from every direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think uh, I think my favorite from him is uh, when uh, when asked what he thought of a, of a flamethrower uh, demonstration say where the hell do you put the bayonet on this thing yep yeah <laughs> it, implying that after he lights the guy on fire he wants to stab him yeah god there was i have to say out of all the things you're going to do in the military being the dude with the flamethrower on your back was sure a shitty position almost as bad as a ball gunner <laughs> well on the ground everybody <laughs> was almost, aiming 
on the ground, everybody was aiming for your ass because they're like, hey, it's a Roman candle. Well, every fucking damn plane that's not on your side was trying to shoot <laughs> that goddamn ball gunner. Well, because I can see up. Yeah. <laughs> it's the balls hanging from that plane. <laughs> oh, man. And the fact that they didn't, they were so, they had to be so small and tight and compact in <clears> there, <throat> they couldn't have a parachute. I know. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, even I, I, it's a toss-up for me, which is the worst military job, ball turret gunner or tunnel rat. Oh, yeah, no shit, tunnel rat. Yeah. I, what about the mess cook, considering all the jokes I've known from military people? Well, <laughs> I will take all the cookie jokes on the planet before you fucking get me in a ball turret. Yeah, no shit. Well, thankfully, Ryan, you, I, and James are too tall. There's my... F- <laughs> okay. Yeah. My favorite. There was a time I was definitely skinny enough to be a tunnel rat. You ain't getting me in there either. One of my favorite stories, and I, I, I'm sorry, I wish I knew who, who it was about, <clears throat> but there were two guys in the bar, both in the military, and they were, you know, they're both kind of kvetching. Uh, one guy was kvetching about what he did for the military, and I guess the, the little guy said, we can change positions. The guy said, okay, what do you do? He said, I'm a ball turret gunner. He said, <laughs> do, thank you. I'm roughly paraly- uh, paraphrasing, but it, it's just the hilarious idea, idea of any normal military guy would never want to be in that position. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's rough going. Not a, not a long life expectancy. Oh, hell no. I don't think, I'm kind of wondering what, I, I knew they didn't have a great life expectancy, but I don't think, I, I bet the it was even worse for those guys. You know, I, there's, there's so, so much in the news now is politics. Like, as everybody's talking about Trump, I wonder what, how much m- news is missing. Cause I bet, I, I bet you could have somebody come back from the grave like Michael Jackson and nobody would ever find out. <laughs> you know what? There's, there's something I learned about the news a long time ago. If you as the, the, the news person want to make it seem like the world is perfect, you can. If you want to make it seem like it's going up in flames, you can. If you want to make it seem like it's right down the middle, you can. All of those things can be equally true at the same time. It's just what they decide to focus on. I mean, seriously, my cousin, he must have more time than I do because I, I, I've, I've talked to him before and he'll, he used to tell me, oh, I just watch three news. I'll watch CNN, I'll watch MSNBC, and I'll watch Al Jazeera. It's like, fuck, seriously? I'm just going to watch cartoons. I'd rather know what Tom and Jerry is doing because I don't have the time to piece three stories together. Yeah, no shit. <clears throat> so do you, James, Ryan? Yeah, but I mean, but that's almost what you have to do now. It's, it's so hard to, to vet. You, you have to accept that everything is going to have spin. So <clears throat> hearing one extreme spin versus the other is the only way to find the middle, it seems like, anymore. I wonder yeah. I wonder if we were the first generation who just automatically assumed everybody was full of shit. No, and, and speaking on that topic, I did find uh, um, Samuel Clemens quote that I forgot about, which I always appreciated the wisdom in it. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. <laughs> That's exactly why I don't like Elvis. You don't like Elvis? Oh, 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 oh. Talk about uh, the drugged one. If you guys ever want to watch really creepy videos, there's a couple of tours of Elvis's house on YouTube. There's like half a dozen or more videos. There's probably a thousand by now. But everybody has this weird reverence for it, and it's really creepy. Like one of the one of the videos is actually from El- the whatever organization actually takes care of uh, Graceland. This lady walks up and says, this was a cabinet that Elvis bought in 1962. And here, and if you open up this drawer, look, it's a lighter he used to light his cigarettes and shut the door. And it's just like, this is like the tomb Jesus died in, except it's Elvis's house. It's, it's, it really creeped me out. It's almost like a cult. I mean, Joseph Smith would be like, okay, back off. Sorry. Um, And John, this is when you should keep in mind at all times. Arguments are unsafe with wives because they examine them, (laughs) but they do not examine compliments. (laughs) How am I supposed to keep that in mind? Now I'm confused. Um, 
I just it was let's see what other because that that uh, Elvis the the Graceland thing is creepy. There's a couple other things I've seen that are that are that are incredibly creepy. <clears throat> I actually almost think what people do to the Vatican is kind of creepy. You know, like they they have this weird reverence for a building that has absolutely nothing to do with being a Christian or a Catholic, except for the fact it's a big damn building. Well, it's got everything to do with being a Catholic. Uh, are the buildings that important in Catholicism? Um, I don't know. Yes, to a certain extent. I mean, uh, for Catholicism specifically, the Vatican because it's own it's its own sovereign nation. Um, so it's it's basically the the representation of the church in the world, as far as they're concerned. Hmm. <laughs> like, um, so not necessarily the building, but the property on which the building is. You know, the the sovereign nation that is Vatican City. Because I I was incredibly heartbroken with Notre Dame or Notre Dame or however you say it. I was really bummed when that caught on fire. But yeah, no kidding. Couple of reasons I've actually I I think I've actually been in that one. And, and for me, it was, it was, I mean, especially as, as somebody who's a Christian, I always thought it was cool to, I always thought it'd be cool to catch a service in there, but just because of how many lives have actually entered that building and have been affected by it, I, that was kind of like, well, damn, that sucks. Yeah, oh, no, my, my thing for the, for the, I mean, for the Vatican also, I mean, it, it goes for as much as, as much as Notre Dame, there's nothing to do with the religion, everything you do with, with the historical architecture. How I wonder uh, how, like you said, I mean, the amount of lives that have, that have gone through that, the amount of generations that have, you know, seen the same sight that you can see today. Uh, what is the, is it Saint 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 uh, Peter's? Is that what it is? Yeah. I wonder how old that building actually is. I don't know. I got one more quote for you guys. I've used this one a few times, but I kept on forgetting that it was Mark Twain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but because I also heard it uh, uh, tagged to Churchill. Never argue with stupid people. They will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. <laughs> Jeez. So St. Peter's Basilica, where's the date on here? Oh, oh holy crap. So it was consecrated uh, cons- uh, at November 8th, uh, 18th, 1626. Archages? Yeah, so... <laughs> It was architects of this were uh, Michelangelo. Um, they're all a bunch of famous guys, but that's the one that stands out to me at the moment. That's amazing. I didn't realize it was that old. I don't know. Den- designated a world cultural uh, a world heritage site in eight, 1984. Huh. <coughs> so, right now we're slowly winding down, down yeah anybody have any stories anything else to talk about i can no, talk not really i could do more of my favorite quotes i think we i think we burned everybody out on quotes for the for the month yeah <laughs> no i'll do one more but it's actually a poem <laughs> it's a dark an, day in the middle of the night two dead boys got up to fight back to back they faced each other drew their swords and shot each other deaf policemen heard the noise came and shot the two dead boys you do not believe this tale is true. That's the blind man he saw too. That no, one? that wasn't it. Oh. Um, <laughs> there once was a man in Nantucket. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, it's actually from Lord of the Rings, just because it's. It, I I I love the alliteration of it. All that is. Let's see. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadow shall shall spring. Renewed shall the blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. Unless you're a fucking Peter Jackson movie, then you get the sword in the goddamn wrong spot. Sorry. As you can tell, little things in movies bug the fuck out of me. Of course, if you listen to Real Flicks Reviews all these years, you'd know how pedantic we are. And I still don't understand how you enjoyed 20 minutes of the movie where you just reviewed. Um... Yeah, shit. I'm a movie nut. I mean, come on. I've no, watched. No, no, no. That that is not a movie nut thing. That is coming from you're disturbed. Coming disturbed. Coming from the guy who watched all Phantasm in three days. I would watch him in a day. 
rather than watch that movie again. I don't think you could actually watch all seven in one day. I don't care. I'll do it. Okay. I, 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 I'll, I'll buy you lunch if you can watch all seven in one day. Get me seven t- TV screens. No, you have to do it. You have to do it on your phone. <laughs> no. no, that's not the rules, John. <laughs> um, <coughs> okay, if you were going to torture somebody, what song would you do it? I'd have them watch that movie. No, nope, song. What song would I have? The, what would what it, song so, I would drive them nuts with? Yeah, so they, if they were chained to a chair and forced to listen to a song for 24 hours, what would it be? Oh, I... I I don't even think my choice would take 24 hours. I'm going to go with Lime and the Coconut. <laughs> I was going to go with Barbie Girl or Barbie World, whatever that song is. Oh, uh, yeah, by Aqua. Yeah. I was thinking Bye Bye American Pie. Oh, no, I have the perfect one. Perfect one to play on a loop, keeping somebody up for 24 hours to listen to it. What's that? Hey, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, that, that, wins, that wins outright. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, um, my God, that wins outright. Play that really fucking loud. Yeah, I'd tear my goddamn ears off. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to see if I can beat that, but all the songs I know are super <laughs> obscure. Um, it's one of those that, like, I would try, I would feel slightly nostalgic if it came on. I'd be kind of singing it in my head for a couple of minutes. But it would quickly go away, and I'd be like, "All right, just enough of that." <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Do you know? I want to see a horror movie do that, where the 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 main bad guy just goes, "Hey, Mickey, you're so fine." <laughs> that would be, dude. I I would love that because that would totally and, and do kind of like the psychopath face. Yeah, that would be hilarious. What happened to him? Oh, Jane just chained him up. Um. <laughs> God, I'm trying to think now. Yeah, you can't really top that now, can you? No, that's really hard. That's, um, oh, geez. But I completely agree with Ryan. Like, the first maybe 20 minutes, I might be nostalgic and singing along with it. But after that, I'm going to kill somebody or myself. The first 20 minutes, I could hear for, like, what is it, a three-minute song? I'm yeah. good with that. I don't need more than that. I think I could last yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, but starts again with that ultra cutting fucking high end yep. like yeah I'd, I'd chew through my own wrist <laughs> you know what i think it is i think it's because it's so like happy like if you listen oh, yeah. to, if you listen to like any bob dylan songs you just be digging it or, or like american pipe all of a sudden you got this hey mickey you're gonna want to just like you, you gotta try to beat your brains in with your own tongue yeah <laughs> that's hilarious i damn I can't talk that. I keep trying. What positive songs do I know? It's like, no, I don't know any super positive songs that would beat that. It doesn't even need to be a positive song. It just needs to be a song that wouldn't make you want to massacre everybody. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Hey, but uh, I can't even remember the title of the actual song. Uh, if you like pina coladas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you like pina coladas. Godsmack Voodoo would do it after a while. Yeah. No, I I I I fucking zone out to that song. <laughs> um oh, damn. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> I've got a freaking uh oh oh what's that song in the movie Ghost they play when they're you they're they're using the they're doing the clay? Was I will always love you. Oh. I bet after a while you you'd you'd want to kill somebody listen to that. Wait, in in Ghost? Yeah. yeah it's I during- wasn't oh I'll always love you. That was from the bodyguard. Uh, yeah. So that there's that that the, there's a song in the <laughs> ghost. I think it would do it. I'm gonna fucking text you. <laughs> I'm gonna top this. I just don't know what it is yet. I'll ask. I'll have to ask the people at work. <laughs> no, it can't be. It can't be a poll service. I'm gonna fucking phone a friend. Because <laughs> none of my friends are as twisted as you. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I'm the best. Man, I just, I imagine it starting for like the fifth time and it's just, I feel like the person screaming in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, movie. You had to force somebody to watch a movie for 24 hours. Okay. Violent Voyager. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to go with. No, it can't be, it has to be, a, it cannot be, make an older movie, not one we just reviewed. <laughs> cool. Nah, nah, I don't know. That's that that you can zone out to that movie. I should know. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think after a while you start fucking seeing it behind your eyelids. 
Uh, honestly, the movie's not that impressive. It's not even that torturous. It's pretty fucking torturous. That movie's awful. I was thinking the Lord of the Rings rotoscope, the ho- I meant the Hobbit rotoscoped, um, but it, it, it was the the one. God, it was the movie that Jeff picked. That black and white. What was it? The Francois. Oh, it was the Band Apart one. Yeah. No, I think wasn't that the movie? No. Was it Band Apart? No, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um mine would probably be Rockadoodle. Oh, uh That one I think that one. Cause I'd say something like a racer head, but that's too easy. What's that movie that he had us do? I don't know. I don't remember. I know what movie it was. It was a John Luke. It was a John Luke Goddard movie. Oh, that's right. Um. So Ryan, what did you say yours would be? Cool World. Aside from Cool World and Violent Torture. Has to be another movie. I mean, come on. I've I mean, watched. I could probably sit here and name you a hundred if you keep not accepting the ones that I give you. I know. I totally gave him the one that I wanted, and he's like, "Come on, no. that's that that you know. Come on. I mean, Violence Voyager is not that bad. Oh, dude, it so it, is. I, I, are you kidding me? <laughs> no. I've seen much worse. Man, I, 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 I defy you to find me something worse than that. Oh, 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 um. What was that piece of shit? The Spain- Buffalo 66. That'll do it. And Violence Voyager. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, not even in the same category as Violence Voyager. No, that's right. You got to pick a bad one, like uh, a worse one, like Super. No, I, I would watch Super a million times over <laughs> this. You heard him, Ryan. Violence he Voyager. loves Super now all of a sudden. Way better than child porn. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, for for the California Pariah, for the Fat Man and Phyllis Diller over there, as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.